chapter 16. All right, amen. It is good to be saved. It's good to be in church. Mark chapter 16, we're going to start at verse 1. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, uh, had bought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, that's Sunday, they came into the sepulcher at the rising of the sun, and they said among themselves, Who shall roll away the, the stone from the door of the sepulcher? And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. And entering into the sepulcher, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were frightened. And he saith unto them, Be not affrighted, ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. Let's pray. Father, again, it is good to be saved, and it's good to be in church. And Lord, it's just uh, thankful a lot of people came out today, Lord, to worship you and to celebrate your resurrection, Lord. We ask you to bless the message, and uh, we love you and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right. Now, what Mark chapter 16 is doing here, and what the other Gospels also do, is that uh, they are just telling the account or the story uh, of the crucifixion. Uh, Mark is reporting uh, from the first-hand uh, uh, account of what Peter had witnessed. All right, and what 1 Corinthians, which we're going to look at in a few minutes, uh, what the Apostle Paul is going to do is that he's going to offer a defense. He's going to offer an, an explanation of what the resurrection is all about. So what the Gospels report, what, what Mark is reporting is, hey, this is what happened, A, B, C. And what Paul's going to further explain uh, to, to us and to the church in Corinth is why this happened and why we must defend it. He is offering a defense. Uh, today we celebrate Resurrection Day. Uh, I believe it is the most important message of Christianity. Uh, Christmas Day is nice and you know we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. Uh, Thanksgiving uh, we give thanks to a loving God who has blessed us with a, a great year of abundance. All right now Resurrection Day uh, that's Bible. That's the Gospel. Uh, the gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and that is what we believe on. All right, the resurrection, I believe, is one of the fundamentals of the faith. All right, You say, what is a fundamental of the faith? A fundamental of the faith is something that we believe in Christianity that is not negotiable in our belief. It's we believe in the resurrection. It's not, well, maybe it happened. or No, it happened. It's fundamental that Jesus arose. Right? The major fundamentals of the faith also include that God is a trinity, that Jesus is God. Right? We believe in the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. We believe in the blood atonement of Jesus. When Jesus was on the cross and he died and he shed his blood, that atoned us for our sins. Paul writes in Ephesians 1, 7, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Another fundamental of the faith is salvation. And we are saved by grace alone and through our faith and in Christ alone. All right, amen. Another fundamental is the second coming of Jesus. Uh, he's coming back again. All right. Well, and the last fundamental is that the Bible, God's book, all right, it is God's book to mankind. It is perfect. It is without error. It is sufficient for the Christian life, and it answers all the questions that we need to know about us and about God. All right. And lastly, the resurrection is a major fundamental of the faith. Our hope is not spent in the 33 years that Jesus was uh, spent on earth. Our hope is in his resurrection. Uh, I like the fact that the choir was singing about resurrection. Uh, what happens is that a lot of times churches, they just focus on uh, you know, singing about the resurrection around Easter time. It's good to sing about the resurrection anytime. All right, it's very important. We should be preaching more on the re resurrection, not just on Easter. The death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is fundamental and is very important. Now, this is where we got to pay attention. 
How's the speaker sounding? Huh? Is it okay? Yeah. All right. I, I feel like I'm getting a little feedback. I don't know. I usually don't get too close, but we'll see. All right. But this is very important because uh, we got to pay attention just for a minute or two. Then if that, you can go you know, take a dose and play with your phones. But anyway, I'm going to give you the, de the definition of resurrection and, and some definitions of some other words. Now, resurrection here means coming back to life after death and having a new glorified body. That's resurrection. So they say you learn something new every week. You have, we just learned that resurrection is that you die, you come back, but you have a new glorified body, which is different from resuscitation. All right, I hate to be throwing out these big words here, but we gotta explain it here a little bit. You say, what's resuscitation? Uh, someone falls into the, into the pool and they drown. They're, they're dead. They are clinically dead. And what happens? The EMS comes along and, you know, and then they come back. They were dead. They were alive. But they still got the old, you know, the old fat body, no hair, no teeth. And they, they, they don't have a new glorified body. So that's resuscitation. All right. Lazarus, if you remember the story of Lazarus, he died. Jesus brought him back to life. Now, Lazarus did not come back in a new glorified body. In fact, they said, Lazarus, you stink it. All right? So that's the difference between resurrection and resuscitation. All right? Now, what separates our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, capital L, from the other slower case lords is that they did not resurrect. All right? Mohammed, when he died... They buried him somewhere in the desert. He did not resurrect. Now Buddha, the old fat Buddha, I don't know how, they must have had to dig a big hole for him. But when he died, he, they, they buried him, and he did not resurrect. All right? What about reincarnation? All right? Reincarnation is a, you die, you are born again, but you can come back in a different person, or a different form, such as an animal or something. So say, for example, if I believed in reincarnation, I died, I can come back uh, as a woman, all right? Uh, or I can come back and, you know, and I could be reincarnated into a, uh, a cow. I hope I would come back as a cow. <laughs> I mean, listen, if there was a cockroach over here on the pulpit, and, I just might have just killed Uncle Louie, you know? <laughs> but we don't believe in reincarnation, all right? You got a little joke at it. I like that. But reincarnation uh, believes that you die and you come back. And then what happens? If I killed Uncle Louie, he might have just said, thank you, I don't want to be a cockroach anyway. And he can come back and become a king or, or a cow or something else. But reincarnation is you're born, you die, you come something else. You're born, you die, you go into something else. But that is not Bible. Because the Bible says in Hebrews 9.27, as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. That kills the whole reincarnation thing. The Bible says you die once. You're born, you die, and the next conscious thing that you're going to see is that you're standing before God and you're going to be judged by Him. All right, so we kind of got that all uh, explained. Why? You know, resurrection is different from what other beliefs and what other people uh, believe in. All right, now, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 is the greatest defense chapter on the resurrection. And that's what I'm going to be preaching on this morning. If you've been a child of God uh, for any number of years, you've heard this before. Okay? Uh, this is not any new teaching. I'm, I'm, I've preached... This message, you know, uh, in, in different forms throughout the years because I think it's important to preach on the resurrection. Uh, there may be one amongst us that have never heard the story or, or message on uh, the resurrection. Some of us may have never heard the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus. All right? The resurrection is the gospel. The Lord's resurrection is the good news. So let's go at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and let's kind of break down what the brother had read earlier, and I'm going to break it down for you over here. So 
Let's look over here at 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 15, verse 1. Paul writes, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you, here it is, the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if you kept in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye believed in vain. Now here's the gospel. He said, I've preached the gospel, and if you believed in it, you're saved. Okay, and he's now going to define the gospel. For I have delivered unto you first of all which I also received one, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and two, that he was buried, and three, here's the resurrection, that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. In verse 1, Paul declared and preached the gospel. In verse 2, he says that you're saved by the gospel. In verse uh, you know, in verse, uh, 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 over here, verse 3 and 4, he, de he defines what the gospel is. Now, in verse 5 and 7, he continues here, and it says, He was seen of Cephas, that's just the apostle Peter, then of the twelve. Verse 6 here, this is an interesting verse here. After that, he was seen of above 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain until, until this present, but some are fallen asleep. Now, what does that verse mean? After Jesus Christ arose from the dead, and before he ascended into heaven, what did he do? He spent 40 days here on earth, and, and he was preaching, all right? And there were over 500 witnesses that saw Jesus' resurrection. They saw that he was crucified, they saw that he died, they saw that he arose, and that he, they saw that his time on earth, and they saw that he ascended. And Paul's saying that, hey, some of these 500 witnesses that had saw this are still alive. He said, ah, some are past, but a lot of them are still alive. Didn't you think they had a story to tell? Can you imagine if you were at the resurrection, and then five, ten years later you had a granddaughter or, or a niece, or, or you had a son or a daughter, you said, hey, guess what? I was there at the resurrection. I saw Jesus hang on the cross. He died for my sins. He arose from the grave, and I saw him go to heaven. That's a first witness account. Over 500 people had reported that. And Paul's saying, hey, some of you guys are still alive. Some of you guys, you know, you, you saw that. You experienced that. Didn't they have a story to tell? Boy, we, 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 we base everything on our faith. But these guys, these, they got to see it all. Some got to see Jesus alive for his, his 33 years. His three years of ministry. He died on the cross and rising and, and ascending up to heaven. Boy, I mean, we're just looking for a little bit. And they got to see the whole deal. And then verse 7, and after that he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. In verse 8, and then last he was seen of me also as one born out of due time. Uh, Paul is talking about his experience with the Lord where he had once persecuted the church, but then when the Lord met him on the road to Damascus and blinded him and, and then saved him and called him out to Saudi Arabia for a couple of years and gave him the gospel message, Paul says, hey, I'm like the last apostle, man. I was born out at due time. All right, that's Paul just giving himself a little testimony there. And he says here in verse 9, for I am the least of the apostles, that am not me to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. Paul was, a, was an honest man. He was a humble man. He says, hey, I'm the least of these apostles. I once killed Christians for this resurrection nonsense. All right, that was my job. But then God called them out, straightened them out, saved them, and now Paul's on fire for the Lord, and now he's defending the one thing that he used to persecute, which is the resurrection. All right, And we could also look at the Apostle Paul and look at ourselves. You know, don't think uh, for a minute, you know, Paul, he used to persecute the church. I, I bet some of us, before we were Christians, we would look down at Christians. All right, before we were Christians, we'd see our neighbor go to church and carry the Bibles. Ah, those idiots. Ah, those holy roller Jesus thumpers, they're going to church. What are they doing? Go, they get dressing up on a Sunday. Oh, boy, if I can only stay you know, straight. Yeah, some of us used to persecute the church until we met Jesus on the road to Damascus, and we got right with the Lord. All right? Paul continuing here, verse 10. Uh, By the grace of God, I am what I am. Now, you know, Paul got that line 
I mean, Popeye got that line from the Apostle Paul. Remember Popeye? I got, I got, I got my M and I M. <laughs> he got that from Paul. All right. So a lot of people, you know, bum line from 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 the Bible. But Paul here says, I, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace was bestowed upon me, was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Isn't that interesting? Now, one minute Paul's saying, I'm, you know, uh, I'm the least of the apostles. And two verses later, he says, but I worked more than the other apostles. I mean, something got a hold of Paul. And that man was on fire for the Lord. And he just would not stop working. But I labor more abundantly than they all, yet not but the grace of God which was in me. I, by the grace of God, Paul was an apostle, and he was used by God to spread out the gospel message to the Gentiles. Paul was used of God to establish the church throughout Asia, throughout Europe. Paul was a mighty man of God, used by God. He wrote 13 books of the Bible, more than any other New Testament writer. All right? And by God's grace, he died a martyr. He finished the race. He claimed the prize. All right, now here in verses 11 and 12, he kind of, you know, focuses back on the resurrection here. He says here in verse 11, Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach and so ye believe. Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? How say some of you that there is no resurrection from the dead? You see, as time went by, some of the Christians in the early church were like, they didn't maybe witness it or experience it, and they were like, well, how can a guy die and come back and have a new body, and maybe the resurrection is, maybe it didn't happen. And some would say that there is no resurrection. Some of the cults, uh, they deny the resurrection. Uh, the Jehovah Witnesses, they deny the bodily resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and, says, and, and, and insist that, they, that Jesus was raised as a divine spirit or an invisible spirit creature. No, Jesus came back with a new glorified body. That's why he said to Thomas, touch me. Put your hand here, touch me. It's a new body. All right? The Satanists, which uh, apparently is a growing movement within the world, uh, you know what they believe, the Satanists? They believe that Jesus was crucified on the cross and that he died and that was it. No resurrection. It's like, yeah, we killed them and, and that was it. They don't even believe in the resurrection. Now the Catholic Church, usually you kind of disagree with a lot of things with them, but they got it right. Now, they believe just like what we believe in. They believe in the bodily resurrection. And sadly, some liberal mainline Protestant pastors really don't believe in the resurrection. They teach almost similar accounts to that of the Jehovah's Witnesses. That, well, it was the spiritual resurrection and Jesus never had a glorified body and, you know, it's just a nice story. So, but anyway, I'm just telling you how some other, you know, other movements uh, teach on that. All right? Uh, Muslims, uh, they don't believe that Jesus resurrected. All right? Uh, they, uh, a Muslim college professor taught in Virginia that Jesus, Jesus didn't resurrect and that Jesus' dying on the cross was a hoax. And when a, a student uh, wrote a term paper and challenged him, he gave him an F. Yeah, that's in the news. You can go Google that. All right? And in verses, in John chapter 20, we have the witness of doubting Thomas to the physical resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, let me tell you, loved ones, it's very important that you believe in the resurrection. Because if you don't, you, you don't have to give an account of me. I've got, in a, got to give an account to God. But I, I would encourage you, believe in the resurrection. All right, continuing here in, in 1 Corinthians 15, in uh, verse 13, Paul says here, but if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And what's going to happen here in verses 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 19, the Apostle Paul puts a lot of ifs, all right? When I was in the police department, we would have training, and there was always one guy or gal in the training that was always the what if person. Well, what if, you know, when they rob the bank, uh, can we shoot the car when we're driving? And we don't want what if people in, in the training because the faster the training entered at the finish, 
the faster we got to go home. So if the training ended at noon instead of four, we got the skedaddles. So once we got Mr. What if, hey, no what ifs today, but just be quiet, sit, but I want to catch the 1215 home. All right, but Paul here gives a lot of what ifs. All right, and he says that I like to focus on these what ifs. He says, uh, uh, again, verse 13, but if there be no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. All right, and I like to focus on these what ifs. If you have no resurrection, you have no Savior. If Jesus rose not from the grave, he would not be able to save your soul. If there be no Savior, then there is no salvation. And if there's no salvation, there's no hope. And if there's no hope, then there's no coming of the Lord. And if there's no coming of the Lord, then there's no heaven. I'd say that's all connected. What ifs? Jesus had to have resurrected so that we may, through his atonement of sins and blood sacrifice and dying on the cross for us, that covers it all. But if he did not do that, we wouldn't have anything that, that God is offering here. And if there be no resurrection, there won't be anything to preach about. Look at Paul here, verse 14. And if Christ be not risen, then our preaching is in vain. And your faith is also in vain. Uh, what am I preaching on today? No, that's right, Gordon. Not, not a trick question. We're preaching on the resurrection today. And if there be no resurrection, I, I, then I got nothing to preach about. All right. And if we didn't pre and if we don't preach that didn't arise, why tell people about Jesus in the first place? I mean, just hey, yeah, he died on the cross. You know, he failed experiment. You know, things didn't work out. No. The resurrection is real. He died for our sins. He came back alive. He has a new resurrected body. And the same thing's going to happen to me and you. We're going to die. We're going to be brought back to life. And we're going to have a new glorified body. Because of Jesus' resurrection, we get in on the resurrection thing as well. Amen. That's right. Amen. And, and that's a good thing to preach about. And if Jesus didn't, didn't arise, then, then what am I doing here? All right? What am I doing here right now? If Jesus didn't arise, then there's nothing to preach about. Then we don't have a message of hope. But I believe that, and I believe in the resurrection, and we do have a message of hope. That's why Paul told the church earlier in 1 Corinthians 1.21, For it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. I'm a fool for God preaching to you guys that you may become saved. And God says, well, please. I don't mind jumping up and down and spitting and telling a couple of jokes and having a laugh and making fun of myself, but it's all got to come back to Jesus. It's all about the resurrection, and it's the resurrection in your faith and belief, and that'll save your soul. All right? The government can't save you. The United Nations, <laughs> they, can't, they can't even pave a road. Welfare, social benefits, yoga, Google, Dr. Phil, Oprah, self-help gimmicks, they can't save you. Right? They can help you, but that's just temporary. All right? But the resurrection is eternal. It'll save your soul for an eternity. Amen. And I'm not against the government, and I'm not against Dr. Phil or Oprah, and I'm not against helping people, but those are in the temporary. But we have a message in the resurrection that that hope is eternal, and that leads to eternal life. If there be no resurrection... Why go to church? Why support missions? Why, why, why tithe? Why help the poor and needy? If there's no resurrection, what are we doing here? I mean, just <clears throat> turn this into a social club. Charge you guys 20 bucks for the hand. You know, we're here to help people and tell the gospel message of the resurrection. All right? It's nice to feed a, a homeless person or, or help someone. That's nice. But... In the name of the Lord, brother, I give you this sandwich. And the reason why I'm giving this to you is because I want to tell you about the resurrection. I want to tell you about Jesus. We can help the physical, but we got to help the spiritual as well. The church can do a mighty work through helping those, but it all has to focus on the resurrection. All right? These Easter baskets that we're giving the kids out later on. Let me tell you something about the Easter baskets. And I'm not, I don't want to step on anyone's toes or anything, but I know other churches, they do just candy stuff and Easter bunnies. And, and, I, and I'm like, no. It's, Easter's not about the Easter bunnies. It's not about the eggs. And I'm not going negative. But these kids are going to get, they're going to get the chocolate, but it's a chocolate cross. Isn't that nice? 
They're going to get a Jesus fish. They're going to get a New Testament Bible. They're going to get the golden book of the story of Jesus. We want to bless the kids. We want to give them candy. We want to give them cavities. And all you parents, well, you got gluten-free sugar. No, it's all sugar. It's all bad for you. But they're going to get the gospel message. They're going to come home with, with something and you parents that came here that brought your kids, praise God for you, but you're going to hear the gospel message because that's what the church is here to do. The church is here to preach. The, that's right. Yeah. Listen. That's why I'm, kind of, like, I'm going kind of costly here for a second. You know? Listen, we, can eat, we can eat the chicken wings and the pizza and the candy, but you're going to get the ultimate sugar, and that's going to be the gospel message because that is the sweetest. Right? Amen. All right. All right, so I totally went off message. I don't even know where I am. I'm, I'm an old guy. I have to write notes to myself. I, I can't even, I'm in that point in my life where I where's my car keys? Babe, where's my underwears? Where's my, where's my, where's my socks? All right. We want to tell people about the Lord Jesus Christ, the one that saved your soul, that cleaned you up, that loves you, that died for you, that gives you eternal life, that's promised you a mansion in heaven where the roads are paved with gold. If there be no resurrection then there's not going to be any faith. Look at verse uh, 14. And if Christ be not risen, uh, and then our preaching is in vain, and your faith is also <clears throat> vain. You know why there's a lot of dead, empty, vain, selfish churches? Because they don't preach the resurrection message. They preach welfare, they preach good deeds, but they don't want to offend, they don't want to tell anybody about Jesus, they don't want to tell anybody about the resurrection. They'll have bingo and Zumba, you know, jazzercise, you know, classes, but no Jesus. All right? They, and, and they treat church like a carnival. Right? There's a church down in Merrick. Every year they got Las Vegas tables and they set up signs with Budweiser beer and, and they have gambling. And I was like, that's, that's a church? That's the lay of the sea in church that has lost their, and left their first love. Jesus said, my house would be called a house of prayer, but you've made it into a den of thieves. Why? Because they have no faith. If there be no resurrection, then the Bible is a lie, and there's no one to trust. Verse 15, we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up. If so be, that the dead rise not. This is an important verse. Paul's saying that every time we preach out of the Bible or any time we witness to someone or we tell someone about Jesus or about the church, about being born again, if the resurrection didn't happen, then, then, then there, if there's no resurrection. This Bible is a lie. He says we are found false witnesses. If we tell people that, that Jesus arose and he didn't, we're lying. But we're not. We're telling, we're telling the truth. But he's, that's the defense. He's playing the if. If you say this and if you say that, all right, I'm preaching about the resurrection. And you know where I got my information and my, my, my notes from? The Bible. All right? I don't want to be a false witness. All right? If there be no resurrection, then the Bible is a lie, and I'm a liar. All right? The devil is good at that. Uh, how many people have heard of uh, the Da Vinci Code? Right? They come out with books and, and movies and all that. that. That's a lie. All right? They make the Bible out to a lie. They say Jesus di uh, did not die on the cross. He kind of like took him off. They put him in the cave. And, you know, the coolness of the cave revived him. And he grabbed Mary Magdalene. They, they snuck out of Israel. They hopped on a boat, crossed the Mediterranean, got married, had kids, and all the kings... And princes of Europe are direct descendants of that. It's like, that's nonsense. It is. Well, hey, wait, what's your leg saying there? What's your <laughs> Bologna. This is a bologna sandwich, it's right. My book, the Bible, is not a lie. My Lord arose. He didn't marry, 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 and go to Europe. No, that's just nonsense. They're alive. If there be no resurrection, then there's no forgiveness of sins. And if there's no forgiveness of sins, then we are, we're in trouble. We're lost. Look at verse uh, 17. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Ye are yet in your sins. If Jesus didn't rise from the dead, from the dead then we're just, we're all sinners. But then we're a lost, eternally lost bunch of sinners. 
Romans 6, 23 says, For the wages of sin is death. Because Jesus died for the sins of the world and rose from the grave, we can be forgiven. And we're forgiven of the past sins, the present sins, the future sins. Why? Because of the resurrection. And if there be no resurrection, then there's no heaven. Look at verse 18. Then they which also are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. You know what that means? It, if, even if they believed in Christ, if there's no resurrection, they just died, they're in the ground, they perish. That's sad. Imagine being a Christian your whole life and living for God and helping people, and God gave you 90 years, you died, and then that's it, you perish. You're, you're in the grave. No heaven. Why? Because no resurrection. All right? Then they which are also fallen asleep in Christ are perished. That's why we sing that song. I think we sang it last week, maybe. Up from the grave he arose, all right? With a mighty triumph over his foes. He arose a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with his saints. That's us, we're the saints. You see, because there's a resurrection, we don't perish, we don't stay in the grave. We arise and we go up to heaven to be with him. Amen. And we get to sing with the Lord. Up from the grave he arose. He arose, he arose, hallelujah, Christ arose. And if there be no resurrection, all right, verse 19, that we are a most miserable people. I like that word miserable. I mean, I don't like to be miserable, but it's a good adjective. And they say, how are you feeling? Ah, I don't feel good. <coughs> ah, okay. Like, how do you feel? I'm miserable. Whoa, I better pay attention to that. Paul says here in verse 19, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all men most miserable. What does that mean? That means that if all we do is just, you know, live a, live a good Christian life, but there's nothing after death, then life is miserable. It's a lie. All right? If you only have Christ and hope here, but our hope is in eternity, that's why we're not miserable. God's given many people a lot of years, 70, 80, 90 years life. We spend a lot of our time being miserable. We complain about paying the taxes. We complain about the car. We complain about the kids. We complain about the bills. We complain about the credit cards. We complain about the boss. We complain about the neighbor. We're miserable. But because of the resurrection, one day we won't be here. We're going to be up in heaven. Oh, boy, we're not going to be miserable no more. We're going to be happy. Because we have the resurrection, we have the gospel, we have the good news, we have the Lord Jesus Christ, we have hope, we have an eternal life. John said, oh, he that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. So when you're not miserable, you have life, you have eternal life. And if you want a life, a happy life, an eternal life, then you need the Son of God, you need the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Because Jesus arose from the grave, he has the power to save you. He has the power to forgive you. He has the power to give you eternal life. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Isn't that a hope? Amen. And like, what's the opposite of miserable? Joy, happy, gleeful. <laughs> hey, I'm going to heaven. And there's some hope in this thing. There's an afterlife. I'm going to be singing with God. I'm going to be with angels. I'm going to be with my friends. Why? All because of the resurrection. John says in John 1, 4, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Becoming a Christian doesn't sound miserable to me at all. All right? And remember... It all starts with the resurrection. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you so much. And uh, Brother Kenrick, you're going to sing a song for us today? All right.